day, the NFL approved some new rule changes, and uh, they did not approve of some others. So we're going to talk about that, and my voice is coming back. What is up, Finn and NFL fans? I feel like this video doesn't just pertain to one fan base because it covers the entire NFL. So every year during the owners meeting, some of the teams and the owners and even the league itself kind of comes upon new rules and stuff. Uh, and then they either agree on it, they table it for, I think there's another meeting in the middle of the year, um, or they say no. And then next year they try to try and push the rule again. Um, there was a few rules like the tuck rule that was added. Um, some called the Brady rule. You can't dive at the quarterback's legs. Um, no contact within five yards for wide receivers. I was like, all these rules were made during this time. A lot of them were made for the offense. Um, but yeah, so there was new rule changes. And I'm going to go over some of them that were approved and make try to make some sense of them. Some of them, it doesn't really pertain to anything. But we'll still talk about it and try. And then I'll talk about some of them that weren't approved. And if I would have liked to see them approved. And then maybe I'll while I'm running through this, I'll think of a rule that... Um, I think that they should throw in there. Um, but let's jump into it. I'm going to pop it up. So these are the approved rules. So Amendment Rule 5, Section 1, Article 2, proposed by the Philadelphia Eagles. Players can win the, the number zero. So now uh, you can play zero. Referees will adjust, uh, adjust play clock. Oh, that's another one. Sorry. I'll get to that one. So yeah, zero to 90. Um, kickers and punters can uh, use any jersey number between zero and 49 and 90 to 99. So, there you go. You can you can wear zeros now. So only the kickers and the punters can can wear zero. Interesting. Um, there's that, which means you can get a jersey with a zero on it. So you know, if you really want to be, <laughs> if you really want to be a troll, you can buy a Buffalo Bills jersey, get the number zero, and have the name be Super Bowl wins. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I apologize. And then amendments uh, to Rule 4, Section 6, Article 3, and Section four, uh, 7, Article 4, proposed by the Chargers. Referees will adjust play clock following an instant replay reversal the same way they do following other stoppages. Before, players would have to single back to the officials to request more time on the play clock in such situations. Why does this have to be a rule? Why can't that literally be a thing? Why does it? Why did the players always have to be like, "Hey, that's dumb"? If you ask me, that's dumb. Uh, amendment to Rule Fifteen, Section One, Article Two, proposed by the Houston Texans: the replay officials can automatically review a close play on a failed fourth down attempt. Uh, this will save t a team's challenge if close. If it's a close on fourth down, the rule change may speed up the game since the replay official can review the play. Me, I like that one. Okay, so now if it's fourth and short, um, that's automatic. So if they get it or they don't get it, that's an automatic review. I like that. Okay. So far, one out of the three I like. Again, like the can wear zero. Who cares? But I like that one. Um, change the definition of a launch proposed by the committee. A launch is when, uh, which is a personal foul, 15 yards. Now, if a player... Leaves one or both feet to make a tackle. That used to be a thing. Think of uh, Waterboy. You know when Waterboy dove over the pile and sacked the quarterback? That's all considered a launch, and now it's a 15-yard penalty. Uh, to make tripping a personal foul proposed by the competition committee, if a player is called for tripping, the penalty will result in 15 yards and automatic first down. I think it used to be five. We got called for tripping, uh, but that's because our player's foot got stuck. And uh, we got called for tripping. I think it was Connor Williams. Um, the, the, the to make the to make handing the football forward a penalty like an illegal forward pass proposed by the competition committee. This will penalize teams handing off the football forward on a read option. For example, any other running play. Uh, or any other running play by penalty. Handoffs will be made next to or behind the quarterback, not in front of. Wow. That's interesting. And that's going to get tricky. I have a football over here and I'll show you. 
I'll show you what they mean. So, if you're running an RPO, let me back up a little bit. You're running an RPO <clears throat> back here, right? Either back here or parallel. You can't now follow. You can't follow and let the ball go and decide. So it kind of takes away the element of who has the ball. Does the quarterback or the running back? You can't do that anymore where you follow with them and then you either keep the ball or you give it to them. You have to let the go of the ball parallel with you. That's an interesting one. That's a very, very interesting one. Wow. You didn't see it. I could do football tricks. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. <laughs> to make the penalty for illegal punt, drop kicks, or place kicks the same as an illegal forward pass proposed by... So you can't do uh, drop kicks anymore. This uh, will make those acts listed above count for a loss of down. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter, but drop kicks is something they used to do where you would you take the football and you would drop it, and when the ball would hit the ground, as soon as the ball would hit the ground, you'd kick it. Doug Flutie did against the Dolphins the last week of, of a year when he was um, playing for the Patriots, and he kicked the extra point. You drop it, and when the ball hits the ground, then you kick it. It's a drop kick. That doesn't really matter. Um, to prevent the offense from benefiting with an extra play at the end of half because of an offensive penalty proposed by the committee for example if the offense commits a holding penalty that will no longer lead to an untimed to an untimed additional down i don't understand why that needed to be added in there that should be a rule in itself um to clarify the use of helmet against an opponent proposed by the com removing the words uh the butt ram and spear from article eight all right those are and then you got bylaws here um, to change the claim, uh, claiming period uh, to Monday for players who are waived. To insert strength of victory as the second tier for awarding contracts proposed by the committee. Uh, to adjust rules of postseason signings to account for standard television, yada yada. Um, then there's 2023 approved resolutions to make the regular season and postseason roster transaction deadline the same Changes the transaction deadline for Saturday night uh, postseason games to 4 p.m. on a Saturday. To provide greater clarity as to players available for a game proposed by the Chargers. So let's see. Last season, Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins played one snap against the Cleveland Browns in week 14 after tweaking his hamstring in pregame warmups. Yet Cincinnati removed Higgins from the injury report prior to the game, making it seem like he was going to play. Bengals head coach Zach Taylor said Higgins... Found his way onto the field, but then had no intention of playing the game. Oh, so just being, stop being shady. In a, in a, in a nutshell, just stop being shady. Um, to establish one preseason roster reduction date and related procedures proposed by 25 teams. The NFL will keep their 32 teams roster at 90 throughout the entire preseason and then have one day to trim the team down from 90 to 53. This will likely result in fewer starters appearing in the preseason as well as an avalanche of cuts occurring across the league uh, at the exact same time. Wow. So now, instead of it going from 90 to 80 to 70 to 53, it's 90 to 53. So that means you won't, you probably won't see a lot of starters playing preseason, like they said. That's interesting. That's really interesting. And then the ones that weren't approved uh, to allow roughing the passer to be a reviewable call, the Los Angeles Rams. Um, I think all penalties should be reviewable. Give an extra time, you know, give an extra challenge, three in the game. Um, and I think all penalties should be reviewable because these refs are hot garbage. Um, teams go for it on the fourth and 20 following a score instead of onside kick proposed by the Eagles. They're doing that in the, um, spring league. I like that. I think it's, uh, you know, if you can't stop it, then that's on you. That's on the defense. I like that, but they'll probably never let that in third quarterback game roster spot rule revival proposed by the Detroit lions. 
The third quarterback rule came into life in 1991, and it gave teams an uh, emergency p- a passer who didn't count towards the 45-man game day roster. In 2011, owners and players agreed to expand game day rosters from 45 to 46 players. Uh, the details of this change meant if any NFL team wanted to carry a third quarterback on the game day, their inclusion in uniform would count towards game day roster spot. I don't know why that was a problem, especially, you know, you're looking right here. They're talking about the 49ers. It really screwed them over. Um, I don't know why that one didn't go through, but so f- all right. So I, th- to me, the rule changes that I think are interesting are, um, z- the zero one. I don't really care about. <laughs> I don't care about that one. Um, automatic fourth and, and fourth and, uh, down attempts. I really like that. That's an automatic challenge, automatic review fourth and whatever instead of wasting time reviewing it and all that stuff i like that it's automatic i think it's very interesting that now it's going to be cut down from 90 to 53 that's going to be crazy you're going to see a huge flux of players being in the waiver claims and being on the open market all at once and like the rule change says the nfl will keep their 32 the roster 90 da 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 um, this will likely result in viewer starters appearing in the preseason because you really now you really get a chance and a lot of these guys who you didn't get as many opportunities because you got cut before you could have played in maybe another preseason game you get more opportunities but that's really interesting and then the zero jersey number it is what it is the other ones are just semantics the launching and you know, the penalty clock and, you know, not allow. Those are all like semantics. I do think that they should. I like the fourth and 20. Some don't. I think all penalties should be reviewable. All of them, especially some of these tic tac PIs, uh, either offense or defense. The roughing the passers are horrible. Um, the not like the false starts. There were so many times I'm watching the game and I'm like, there goes the right tackle before the ball is even snapped. Like there's a lot of penalties that should be reviewable. Um, but will they ever do that? Probably not. It's kind of like baseball and how some of these umps are just, you know, very questionable um, with their calls, especially with the strike location and stuff like that. But those are your rule changes. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Like I said, the ones I find the most interesting are fourth down automatic and 90 to 53 in one shot. Whew, that's going to make some for some good video. So uh, I'm telling you. There's going to be that lull. I think it's end of June or July before they go into training camp. And I have a lot of content prepared for you guys. Um, the Tua video is coming out probably this week. I'm trying to shoot for Friday. If not Friday, definitely Monday. And then we're going to break down tight ends this week. But on that, like usual, stay classy and fins up.